Hi guys, Drew here. Forgive that I'm wearing the same outfit as my last video. I decided to save myself some time and film them both in the same day. This video is about handmade magical tools and I just wanna share all my little handmade magical tools because I love them, but also maybe inspire some of you to craft and create some tools that you might not have thought of before. So here we go. Okay, so these, as you can see, are my wands that I have made. Starting with the most basic. It's just a twig that dried out. I didn't do anything to this. It was perfect as it was. I don't know what kind of wood it is. I don't care. And I don't use it overly much, honestly, but just a found item that I designated as a wand. This is actually the very first wand I ever made. I don't call it a wand, I call it a stave. And I don't use it overly much. But for me, its original intent was to ground excess energy, probably after healing work. I was kind of guided to create it. It's got this huge quartz cluster point here. This is selenite, smoky quartz, Herkimer diamond. This is a charwhite and a fluorite. And there used to be a credite here, but it popped off and I figured it didn't need to be there anymore, so I left it off. Um, but I made this years and years ago. Very first magical tool I ever made. This is a pine twig that I picked up and I didn't even cut anything off. I left it exactly as it was and glued stones to it. I liked it just the way it was. This is my chakra wand. It has copper wire because copper is a great conductor of energy. It's got a nice point, clear quartz. This amethyst with this cool little triangle in it. This kyanite, prenite, pink kunzite, agni gold dambrite, tangerine quartz, a shiva lingam, and on the bottom here there is a fluorite because fluorite cleanses and heals the auroric field. And on the back, well, of course, the base is selenite. And the back is there are two lodestones for aligning the meridians and um, the spine. And of course, they're good for drawing in anything, any kind of energy or whatnot. This is the first one of these I made. I do make them and sell them. I usually sell them to friends um, in person. I haven't actually put one up in my Etsy shop yet. I'm still debating whether or not I will. This is my sea wand. And in this seashell is a ton of junk. There is sand from Bear Island. It's a little island near here that is mostly untouched. They're not allowed to do anything to it. We're just allowed to go over and swim and whatnot, but there aren't a lot of, there, there are no houses or anything. There's no, you know, stores or anything on it. Um, so once in a while I like to get sand from there. There's that sand in there. There are all kinds of chips um, of different kind of crystals and minerals and there's copper and just all kinds of good stuff. And it's sealed with wax and I use it to direct energy. It's my sea wand. This is a copper wand. This one is actually for sale in our shop, but I will be making more of them. It's got some peridot here. It's got a nice little triskel, triquetra pendant, um, and a beautiful quartz point. And inside it is filled with, who? let's see, ground kyanite, ground selenite, magnetic sand. There's copper. There's all kinds of chips of quartz and every other kind of crystal and mineral you could think of. I actually have it listed in the Etsy shop exactly what is in here. There's all kinds of stuff in here. I think there's garnet granule, all kinds of stuff. Um, but copper, again, is a really great conductor of energy, and it is my favorite metal. So I love making things out of copper. And this is my latest addition. This is my first 
applewood wand. We have an apple tree in the backyard. And it's got a little charm on there. It's a crescent moon with a nemite stone in there. <clears throat> the handle is made out of polymer clay. I've polyed it. I did not sand it down or anything. I wanted this one to be all knobby and natural. I'm going to make another one. I want it to be thicker and I'm going to sand it down. Those are the wands I have made. Next are my staffs that I have made. This one is just a, a walking stick that my husband and I got at a flea market where we live. And it was like five dollars, very inexpensive. So I jumped on it and we got one, or well, we each got one. And I took mine and I added this big fluorite point, obelisk really, to the top. It's got a selenite, a black tourmaline. There's a little charm bag filled with herbs here. There's a blue jay feather, a seagull feather. And this might be a pheasant feather over here. I can't remember. Another blue jay feather. I have a thing with blue jay feathers. Um, this little buffalo pendant. All these little charms. All kinds of charms. Dream catchers and this little wild looking antlers and goddess and a cat. And here's a quartz point with a pentacle. And this is a broken aventurine. Um, pendulum, another goddess over here, and a little skull. This was something that was my husband's when he was a child. Um, yeah, just little tchotchkes and stuff. And I, I use my staffs the way people use their wands. And I use my wands that way too, but I use my staffs as a, it's a way to stand in my power and to direct energy. This is my second staff, and it was bought at a Pagan Pride in Raleigh, North Carolina for a considerably larger amount than the other. I don't remember how much, which probably means it was more than I wanted to pay for a stick, but this woman had them. They had a tree she had had been choked out by a vine, as you can see by this and she cut off a bunch of branches and was selling them and I had to have one so here it is. This is my most used staff. I have I have my um I keep my compass hanging on my staff so that I can always know where it is and anytime I need to know the four directions is right there. But that's the only hunk of plastic on there. <laughs> um I have a nice seashell, an amethyst and citrine point with another fluorite at the top. And I have, oh, this is some, it's a hen, but it's a, I forget what kind of bird. My daughter brought it to me from her grandfather's farm on the other side of the family. And um, it's just all kind of feathers, peacock feather, so many feathers. Okay, this is a nice piece of Amazonite disc hanging on here. This is, a moss agate donut. I have this cage and it has blue hemomorphite and amethyst and Picasso jasper and emerald and smoky quartz. And if I had to guess, I would say this black one here is probably black tourmaline, knowing me. Um, shells. I, I do live at the beach. Pretty little shells. They make nice jingly sounds. I got a little acorn here on the front and this gap that's created. I, okay, right here I start my amber necklace and it goes all the way around all these little grooves. Um, when I'm making these tools, the stones and the items tell me where they want to go. And that might sound weird, but if I try to put it someplace, it, it either feels right or it doesn't. It's good or it's not good. That's just the way it is. Um, this big hunk of quartz, this is actually the first quartz point I ever bought. Nice piece of cinnabar 
I'm good for alchemy. This cool spiral shell. Um, this is a lodestone right here. It looks like hematite, but it, I assure you it's lodestone. And all kinds of good herbs here in my pack. Honestly, it's so long ago, I don't remember what's in there. And I've been debating. I'm probably going to take it off, take whatever's in there out, and redo it and put it back. Um, but I'm sure whatever it is, is for, you know, spirituality and energy and, you know, good vibes and manifestations, stuff like that. And then on my little danglies here, I have, of course, a blue jay feather and another feather and a nice piece of coral. This I just want to quickly show you will be my next staff. And I know what you're thinking. Does she really need another staff? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. No, of course I don't need one, but I actually think I'm going to have at least four, if not more. This will be my third. Um, we got it the other day walking the nature trail near where we live. I need to trim it down and do some stuff to it. I'm going to leave it like it is, but you know, of course I'm going to add all kinds of junk to it. And I was actually watching a video by Amber Moon Witch Solstice. And she was making wands. And I knew I was doing this video, so I got kind of excited. It's kind of synchronistic. Someone else is doing handmade magical tools at the same time. She likes to carve little faces in her wands. And I thought, why haven't I ever thought of that? I want not necessarily a face. I don't know what, but I want to carve in my staff. And I looked over at this staff. I have it waiting to be made up. You know, I've got it all ready to go. And I was like, no, I don't want to carve in that one. So I'm going to have to find another one because I want to do some carving in one of my staves and it's not going to be any of the ones I already have. So I'm going to at least have four. You can never have too many magical items. This is my besom. It's a real funky twig that makes up the handle. I love it. It's something that my husband found and brought home. He's always bringing me stuff like, like that because, you know, we're into that. But the twigs that make up the brush part of the broom are all from the backyard. We have this bush that needed to be trimmed back. And when we decided to trim it back, I said, I don't want to just toss those. I'm going to use them for something. Just like when we had to trim the apple branches. Fortunately, apple wood is a very powerful wood in magic. I don't know what kind of bush this is that grows in our backyard. but. I was like, ooh, I can make a besom out of that. And Random Witch has a really good video on how to make a besom. So I'm going to leave a link to that as well as the Amber Moon Witch of Solstice video in the down bar. I made mine similarly to how Random Witch made hers. It's just a little bit different, but yeah, hers is definitely a good way to do it. I took and made like five bundles of the sticks and tied them together, then tied those bundles to the handle, and then went around with twine like crazy, two of these on the outside to keep it together. And I actually went back and added some E6000. I pulled the handle up because it kept slipping and I added E6000 to it and put it back down and let that dry. And now it's not going anywhere. That's how I made my besom. These are my rattles. This is the first rattle I ever made. It's just a glass jar. I think probably it had like these little beads that smelled good inside of it. And these are all inside. It's, it's really dirty, but inside there's all kinds of beads, mostly made of stones. There's hematite and there's, uh, I see, Tourmalitic quartz, and I see sodalite, and aventurine. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. Um, and <laughs> this was actually made for my son. He had to make a musical instrument from scratch and take it to school, in grade school. And, you know, I'm the weird shaman lady, so I was like, ooh, let's make a rattle. So um, that's where that came from. And, of course, afterward, he didn't want it, so he gave it back to me. So I keep it. And it's special because we made it together. This is my other rattle. Um, inside, this is a leather pouch. Inside of it is a egg rattle, which you could just take like a plastic Easter egg and put some rice or something in it. Um, 
and this is obviously an antler and I have a moonstone here and I have some amethyst aventurine hematite and um, smoky quartz I just stuck it all together and there's that rattle this is my duster my smudge fan I, you can see I love leather strapping I use it all the time so there's clear quartz there's citrine this is ametrine this is charoite and there's some fluorite underneath and I can't tell you off the top of my head why I put those stones on there but clearly in, they have something to do with cleansing and clearing the energy of an area or I would not have put them on there and a bunch of feathers I have so many feathers it's not even funny lastly super easy things to make yourself candles these are just hand molded candles, but even before I was making the hand molded candles, I used to melt down old candles and pour the wax into a container and put a wick in. You can get wick at Michael's. These are ones my husband made forever ago. We had one for each of the elements, but now all we have is air and earth left. And candles like these. I keep them packaged up, but I made these. Um, I don't I don't sell them uh, on Etsy, but all you do is you take tissue paper and either a an actual tissue with pretty pi pictures or a pretty pattern, or you take tissue paper and run it through your printer, and then you take the tissue paper, put it on the candle, and use something like a heat gun or an iron, if you're careful, to transfer the image onto the candle. Another really easy thing, of course, is making powders. You know, I got my ground kyanite, my ground selenite that's been in a million videos. Terracotta dust. There's a grind up ingredients that can be used for magical purposes. And waters. Of course, we have our storm water we sell, my old stone charge water I used to make, my rue water I've made, mandrake water my husband made me. Also, it's super easy to make our own oils. This selenite oil and this quartz oil are based off of recipes by Lady Grave Dancer. I'll leave that link in the description. And this is my own concoction. It is a Wisteria Intuition oil. Also, dried ingredients. These are my citrus. This is my pumpkin. It's very easy to dry your own ingredients. And these are, I had these pumpkins for Halloween. And instead of just tossing them when I was done, I happened to have a dehydrator. It was gifted to me, but I used my dehydrator to dry out pieces of the pumpkin and pumpkin seeds. Very simple to do even without a dehydrator. Yeah, so I think that's it. I think I got everything, probably. Anyway, there are tons of magical tools that we can make ourselves on the cheap. And that's important because we're saving money, but it's also important because we are infusing these items with our energy and our intent while we make them, whether we're intending to or not, especially if we're intending to. And you have a sort of special sacred bond with the tool so yeah make tools make wands make staves make besoms make rattles make anything you can think of go crazy thanks for listening till next time much love and gratitude